Hey folks, Joseph Sabora here. We finally made it. After over 20 years, we now have the special Rockless Modern Life Static Clean that aired on Netflix since last week, August 9th, 2019. Yes. Never thought that would happen. <laughs> Now, for those who don't know, Rockwell's Modern Life was the fourth Nicktoon that aired on Nickelodeon after Doug, Rugrats, and Ren and Stimpy. And like Ren and Stimpy, it too was a show that has gross-out humor, a lot of adult jokes here and there, and whiskey gay innuendos. Yep, I mean, who would have thought that Nickelodeon would actually get away with it all? Yeah, and they did it right. But then, for a while, they started um, either banning a few of the episodes, or at this rate, they had to do a lot of editing. You know, try to ban some of those scenes. Yeah, like, for example, the episode, The Good, The Bad, and The Wallaby. Or, or any other. Or the one where they were actually going on a trip, and they wound up at a hotel. But anyway, it's a series that's set at Old Town which we meet a wallaby named Rocco who lives with his uh, dog Spunky at his own house he also has friends like Heifer who's an overweight cow-like steer and um, Filbert who's a uh, basically he's a nerdy uh, turtle and yes he always goes around saying I'm nauseous I'm nauseous I'm nauseous. Yeah. He also lives next door with the neighbors, um, the Big Heads. Yeah, which has uh, Ed and and Babe, uh, Big Head. Yeah. Um, and then there's like a lot of characters following around, you know, all the way from Conglomo to the the comic book uh, shop that uh, Rocco works and or any other <laughs> yeah so it's a very fun show only lasted four seasons I have the complete series on DVD which I bought uh, a couple years ago and it's the Shout Factory set uh, not the recent uh, Paramount release that came out uh, last year yeah because it was re-released it had a new poster had a different uh, cover art this time, but they did took out a few extras from the Shell Factory set. Yeah. Um, I was actually going to take it out, but I decided to leave it there. It's actually in one of my shelves right here, where all the Blu-rays and DVDs are. Yeah, my other shelf. So that's all right. I mean, I do watch the rest of the series, um, even when it's on Nickelodeon. I mean, the first time I saw it, though, was when I finally got cable. You know, after a few years uh, living in those other places, and, yeah, my that one apartment I used to live in, I was only just uh, three, yeah, three years old, and my parents uh, actually got cable for the first time uh, after uh, Select TV was going through bankruptcy problems, or so. Yeah, Select TV, which is a pay TV service, you know, over the air type, you know, where you get to change uh, some of the UHF stations to actually pick it up, but you had to order by installation, so they give you the box and and you had to use a decoder to actually control the, the signal, all that. Yeah, so you have to pay for it to watch. Uh, all your favorite choices, you know, like movies, sports, family programming, adult programming, or any other. <laughs> so, it's like HBO, and as well as Showtime, Cinemax, the movie channel, but but a whole different way. But, unfortunately, it went to funk in 1989, so I think we made it at the right time to finally get cable. Yeah, it was Samon's Communications, so... Uh, in Glendale, California, which would soon become Marcus Cable and then later Charter Communications and 
which is now Spectrum. <laughs> yeah. Well, anyway, the first time I saw um, the show was on a Sunday, yeah, October 10th, and it was the it, it was actually the one where um, where Rocco and Heifer were going to uh, Chucky Chicken, but but then suddenly uh, Heifer got choked on the, the chicken, and Rocco was was trying to help him, you know, use a like a hemlock uh, maneuver to get the chicken out of there, but and he accidentally uh, went inside the uh, heifer, or all the times he <laughs> even tries to to get that part of the food out of his that's stuck into his uh, cartilage and yeah but it was really tough and then somehow he wants up in <laughs> heck which I know it's supposed to be hell but they, they don't want to get um, sued or or get uh, <laughs> banned which was actually a parody of um, Pinhead <laughs> From uh, the Hellraiser films, I I, I really loved that they they did a parody of that. That was really cool. Was, I did enjoy Hellraiser. Anyway, so that was the first episode, and I watched it ever since. And so whenever the show is on, I tune in along with all the other Nickelodeon shows and and watch every single season. Although actually, by the time they uh, they took off her cable, which really sucks. I actually got to see it in syndication for a while, but it was only on as a Halloween special. And it was on KTLA, actually, because believe it or not, uh, KTLA did air uh, the Nicktoons uh, in syndication, but only as holiday specials. Like, for Halloween, they would play like Doug, Rugrats, Red and Stimpy, and then later, Rockles Modern Life and All Real Monsters. Yeah, that would be the fifth um, Nicktoon. Then they actually played um, the the holiday specials, which will have Doug Rugrats and Ren Stimpy on there. Or in some cases, it'll be like you know Rockles Modern Life or whatever. So they they do change uh, schedules here and there. I mean, they replaced them, you know. It, it was like a, a two-hour block that they had to play, or sometimes a one-hour block. But I mean, for those who remember it back in the 90s, but I guess this is really cool considering that for those who don't have cable, or for those who do, well, there you go. But when I finally got my cable back in 1997, that's when I finally get to see the rest of Rockless Modern Life, all the episodes, the ones I missed, yeah, from... Seasons uh, three and four. So thank goodness. And then I got to see Hey Arnold too, and the rest of uh, Auto Monsters, which I know I saw back in '94. And yeah, Hey Arnold was like a new show. And then Angry Beavers joined in too. Yeah, all the way until my least favorite Nicktoon, Cat Dog, which. Shockingly enough, it did have two voice actors from Rockles Modern Life. Yeah, Tom Kenny and um, and Carlos Alawaki. Yeah. So hard to believe. <laughs> so well, and yes, of course, SpongeBob. Yeah, which became so popular. Which also had one of the creators. Um, of Rockwell's Modern Life. I mean, even though Joe Murray is the uh, the creator of the series, but it also had uh, Steven Hildenberg, God rest his soul, who would soon become the creator of Spongebob. So I think he was one of the uh, writers and producers or so at the time. And they even had some of the voice actors too. Um, from Rockwell's Modern Life. Yeah, they had Mr. Lawrence, who did the voice of Gilbert. Of course, Tom Kenny, you know, the voice of SpongeBob. And some of the other ones. <laughs> okay. Well, anyway, this is supposed to take place um, during the season finale, during the series finale, 
the fourth season, the final season, where they actually go, which is set in the future, and which we actually go back um, in the past, you know, just when Philbert was just uh, quite older, but getting sick, and we notice that Philbert actually has kids now, yeah, because for those who don't know, uh, uh, Philbert was actually married to um, a, a dentist named Dr. Hutchins. Yeah, married to a, a doctor named, uh, or I just read a dentist named Dr. Hutchinson. Yeah. It was voiced by Linda Wallum. And then that's when they had kids. You know, they had one that, so they had like turtles and, and a steer that looks like heifer. And so they explain about what happened back then. And then suddenly their Rockwell's house uh, wants up a drift um, 20 years from now. I mean, later on, since the rocket went straight into his house. So that way they get to experience the 21st century. <laughs> yeah. And that's what led to Static Clink. Yeah. Okay. Well, anyway. Let's uh, do the review. It stars Carlos Alawaski, Tom Kenny, Charlie Adler. He's been best known for doing the voice of Buster Bunny or any other in the TV show Tiny Adventures. Mr. Lawrence, Jill Tolley, Linda Wallum, Steve Little, uh, Joe Murray. Yes, he also does voices of characters as well. But he's, of course, the creator of the series. Cosmo Sargussin, Tom Smith, and Dan Becker. It's written by Mr. Lawrence, Joe Murray, and Martin Olson. And it's directed by Joe Murray and Carlos Sargussin. And yes, there's going to be a spoilers in this review. So for those who haven't seen it, well, check it out already before you watch my review. Okay, so have you riffed me on this one? The special begins after set adrift inside Rocco's house. Yeah, Rocco, Heifer, Filbert, and Spunky were inside you know, doing nothing but watching the Fatheads episodes that they got on VHS you know, before it died. So they were stuck in space for 20 years until they wound up passing by Earth. But Philbert realized that Heifer had the remote control the whole time inside his butt, since he actually sat, sat down inside the couch. So now they, they use the re-entry button so that way they could finally make it back home to Old Town where they live. So once they finally made it, they soon begin to find out that the entire town has changed dramatically for the last 20 years. So once they came back, you know, they begin to experience something new. Like at this rate, all the new customs around and technology such as uh, touchscreen phones, you know, like, sort of like the iPhone. Uh, radioactive energy drinks around, food trucks, coffee shops at every corner, kind of like uh, Starbucks, I mean, go figure. And um, even the movie feeders that had uh, 3D technology, all this other stuff. I mean, pretty much like today's generation, you know? Think about that. But... While Heifer and Filbert were very excited to see how everything was going in Old Town, Rocco suddenly feels overwhelmed and secludes himself inside his house. Yeah, because which also led to that uh, <laughs> that opening that was almost like a parody of the original opening from the series. So I thought that was pretty clever. So then, Bed Big Head had came to welcome Rocco back from Earth. When he asked Rocco why that that he couldn't find the fatheads on TV, well, she explains that 
They've been on the air for a very long time. I mean, basically the whole uh, center of the entire plot was that Rocco was trying to find a way to bring back the Fatheads, which is the show that's created by you know, Ed Bighead's uh, son, Ralph Bighead. We're going to lead to that uh, once I get to this review. But meanwhile, Ed Bighead had made a, a clerical error you know, trying to uh, you know, go using his calculator just trying to uh, measure how much money that, that they're going to make you know but suddenly um, after Rockwell's arrival for the rockets that's where it got screwed up and it wants up uh, they soon realized that by then uh, Kuglamo had entered bankruptcy along with the rest of the town of Old Town. So Mr. DePletz, yeah, Ed's boss, had fired had fired him and his house is being slated for demolition the following day. So so another way to actually f fix this problem Rocco suggested uh, Ed to actually go back to Coglamo and convince Mr. DePlet to bring back the TV series, The Fatheads, hoping that they will come up with a new revival, so that way they'll have enough money to actually save the whole town and Coglamo from bankruptcy, and there'll be enough to actually uh, make the show continue where they left off. But Duplet accepts and rehires Ed, but then orders the Chameleon Brothers to work on the series, which at this point on they had to do a CGI animated special, which, yeah, that led to the desire, <laughs> which they convinced themselves that they're going to ruin the entire series. Rockwell decided to find the original creator, Ralph Bighead who actually left on a journey to actually sell um, the Fathead's uh, ice cream bars or popsicles. Yeah, just when um, Rocco, Heifer, Filbert, and Spunky were trying to search for him you know, through the, uh, the, the droid that's connected to the seats and they wound up um, straight into the desert yeah through the mirage and yeah that's when they finally found him and this is going to be the biggest uh, surprise of them all was when we learned that Ralph Bighead is actually turned out to be a transgender so he's now referred to as Rachel so so Rockwell tries to beg Rachel to return to Old Town so that way he'll be able to create the series so he can bring them back but she eventually accepts her family's sake because you know he hasn't uh, sorry she hasn't uh, seen them for a very long time so that way you know, it'll be for the best Um, now, as it follows, though, Deplet is feeling very depleased with the CGI Fathead special and hires Rachel to take over, you know, actually <laughs> dumping all the other uh, employees around <laughs> out the window. And it was also ready to throw Ed out of the window, too. But um, once uh, Rachel came along, that's when Ed suddenly became enraged with the uh, the personality change uh, with Rachel yes which it's kind of like the episode you know when Rob Bighead had came along and I mean at first which at first Ed wanted uh, Ralph to actually join the working at Coblambo but he decided to become 
a cartoonist instead. And that's when Ed got so furious that, yes, he did yell, I have no son! Yeah, I haven't spoken to him for years. Well, they did the same thing <laughs> in this one, which is, I have no daughter! <laughs> so, he refused to accept, um, he refused to accept the transition and decided to storm out, leaving Kuglamo and the town in jeopardy. Rocco departs very sadly, but Rachel resumes working on the special, uh, despite of what his fa despite of what her father says. So Rocco finds Ed already in a now demolished house, which actually they stripped out <laughs> half of his house. And they try to share their, their fear and resistance in the change that's happening. So that's where we got the wind of change, yeah, which is a cloud that's that's uh, helping them out uh, accept all that. Only, and then Rocco receives a phone call from Heifer and Philbert informing that once since they were having a party, they're actually uh, going for the premiere of the new Fatheads. That's going to be on in in 10 minutes so that way that way he'll be able to make it on time and try to t talk uh, Ed out of it and, and there you go <laughs> yeah because he had to uh, kidnap him in order to to get to the to the Koglamo so that way they'll be ready to watch the special and once they did they were so excited that finally the show came back and it was actually making millions of viewers. But Rocco somehow was very concerned because he was the only one out of everyone else discovered that there was a new baby character, there was a new character in the Fatheads called, which is Baby uh, Fathead. Yeah, so it kind of takes over the attention of the series. So Rocco just so everyone else but Rocco loves the new character and it had billions of dollars so that would be enough to save Koglamo and Old Town and hoping for the best that they'll bring the series back so Rocco suddenly got upset of the disapproval of the special believing that it was way too different for the original Fatheads to come but Ed convinced him to, that change is part of life. Yes, this is the whole situation. And that I think this this could really accept um, a new uh, leaf, hoping that things will go for the better. So, Waco accepts and everything is A-OK. -okay. So now they, they get to move on with their lives in this new climate. And, well, that's when you know, Rachel, along with the family, had got together in the ice cream band. <laughs> and things are going um, pretty swell for the new uh, century, which, of course, the plot uh, <laughs> suddenly was stuck inside the Coblombo building, yes, with the rocket uh, going. Uh, straight into space so now he's going to be stuck in space for such a long time yeah. <laughs> okay now what could I say about this new special they did a wonderful job I thought Nickelodeon did a, an amazing job um, taking all the time and effort to put it back together I mean it's a 45 minute special I know people say it's a movie but it's not Sure, it did have some cliches. The humor does feel pretty forced. I mean, the fact that you see uh, you know, Heifer and, and Filbert, you know, getting all their cell phones and they're just taking pictures, or, or at this rate, selfies. I hate that name. Or, um, you know, they're trying to get into the future like everyone else is and that sort of thing. I mean, they went a bit 
too far on that. Not to mention the the new change, because uh, you know Rockwell's Modern Life always focus on, you know, modern times, so it makes sense. So I know sometimes we're gonna have some new changes for the better. I mean, of course, I mean it does feel pretty rush at times with the story. I I do wish um, they did have some more explanation on why did Ralph had changes gender but that was the case um, I know some people say well I don't know if this was a good idea because I know since we're, they're going they are starting to focus on the yeah, PC culture climate that we're getting that they thought maybe this would be a good idea so as long as it doesn't offend everyone and everyone had to feel very homophobic about it you know a person being gay or lesbian or so. Now, because interesting enough, um, uh, Joe Murray uh, actually uh, took the time by under Nickelodeon's suggestion that his team decided to work with uh, GLAD, which is Gay and Lesbian Alliance Against the Famination, which hoping that this will pay respect for transgenders out there as well as gays and lesbians you know, who can accept this um, change yeah, for the special. Um, so in a way they took the guts to do so but for those who are homophobic out there I mean sometimes they can't accept that. So it does seem like you know nowadays with all these other shows out there and movies even when they try to bring them back they always want to force into all this PC uh, culture throw into it because I know at the time I mean this show came out during the uh, that was on PC although PC kind of went into it later on well I know but but the show was known for having a lot of gross out humor and a lot of adult jokes and yeah, even even had some scenes of blood and and guts in there too. Of course, um, I always loved the um, original theme song, you know, which they had. Uh, I think it might have been an Australian band who sang it, but the, the the first half of the the original season one the theme song of Rockwell's Modern Life um, had like somewhat of a chipmunk voice saying. Modern life, <laughs> yeah. But then later they they had uh, the guys uh, singing that verse, the first verse. Buckles modern life, yeah. Buckles modern life. <laughs> Until they changed the theme song uh, when they went straight to season two, all the way in, until the final season, season four, where they had the B52s. Yeah, the band. Um, known for singing songs like Rock Lobster and Love Shack and even My Own Private Idaho <laughs> yeah so that's cool even though for a kids series I mean it could also be geared towards adults especially for those who grew up with this series you know for nostalgia yeah. and of course I, I love the show not for nostalgic reasons. No, I love the show because it was a fun show, and I could definitely relate to this character. I mean, the fact that he came from Australia and came to this um, country to finally live on his own, focusing on on his modern life. He goes into those very dangerous situations here and there. Yeah, especially with that joke, uh, like for example, uh, whenever. Uh, Rocco, along with Smokey, or anywhere else, or or even his friends, they go for a lot of places, and then they get into bigger trouble. He always says, uh, "Something, something is a very dangerous day." <laughs> yeah. But anyway, I didn't mind the changes that they had to go for, so I can accept that. I mean, yes, it does have the the whole cliche, you know. 
sometimes, you know, let's not live in the past. Let's just move on to the future and let's accept the changes that we have. So that's that message that they had at the end. But I know people do get upset about that, but I understand. There are people who, kind of like me, who don't like the changes that much because, you know, it leads to a lot of things that are a whole lot worse. Yeah, I'm not the biggest fan of, of this generation that we're in, but I understand. I mean, I, I can accept changes if, as long as, you know, we have something that we can deal with. So. Um, but again, I, I didn't mind um, Ralph Bighead being Rachel, and I love the animation. It looked really um, stunningly pristine. I couldn't believe it. It looks beautiful, all in high definition. It's like, wow. I mean, it's basically closer to the animation of the original series, which is all in standard format. So perfect. And. And it, it was, um, they still had everything. They had the same energy, the jokes and all that from the series. So it works pretty well. I mean, even if it's forced here and there. But but in the end, it's, it's fun. It's cool. And I'm just glad that uh, Netflix, I'm glad to see that Netflix uh, took a part of this to, to bring the, the special to their uh, subscription service so that way people will get a chance to watch it for those who have Netflix yeah and I'm glad because you know I do watch Netflix sometimes I mean for shows like Stranger Things and, and mostly movies here and there yeah. and also to note that um, since I am reviewing this um, is that I'm waiting for the next special which is Invader Zim enter the Flopus, yes, and that's another one I've been waiting for. So now I finally get to see Invader Zim come to action. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, because I know Nickelodeon is doing their best to bring back all the classic shows uh, from the past, you know, from the 80s and 90s. And they're going straight into the new generation. I mean, recently they brought back all that. Um, which I did saw the first episode of the new season and eh, it was uh, a mixed bag for me but I guarantee you it's it's gonna be a whole lot worse as all the episodes follow but hey you know I wish I could watch the rest of it but I don't have cable that's, or satellite so I can't watch Nickelodeon and I know I, I mean there's gotta be a streaming site for that um, but who knows? I'll probably find some episodes here and there, if I could, if that's what it takes. Uh, they also had Double Dare, so they brought that back with Mark Summers uh, co-hosting it with um, with Liza Koshi, and and I know they've been bringing back other stuff too, even like in the early 2010s, like Figure It Out, for instance, which that didn't last, and so on and so forth and, and I know they're trying their plans to actually make it into a a crossover film for Nicktoons and they're bringing back uh, Are You Afraid of the Dark yes we're actually going to get the new series um, damn it's like my childhood is finally coming back <laughs> after all these years I love that but then sometimes when you have to bring back something from this generation, it's going to get much worse. Because the way uh, today's PC culture is, and yeah, they're forcing all this stuff down their throats. Today's music sucks, but that depends on which artists out there might be good for us. That might have talents, but then again, music is becoming a joke nowadays. But that depends. Um... And I know, you know, a lot of movies out there, you know, I'm just hoping that we go for the better. I un I know we had Hey Arnold, the Jungle Movie, and I got it on DVD. That came out in 2017, which didn't do very well in the ratings for Nickelodeon. They did have um, 
Legends of the Hidden Temple TV movie, which, that's really cool, but I think it's underrated, though. But it's a movie based on the, on the uh, popular game show that aired on Nickelodeon. Well, let's see what Nickelodeon is, is coming up with other stuff in the future, so maybe for the best, since I know we're getting old, <laughs> we're already in our 30s. I mean, I would imagine how it will continue to go on even when we end up in our 40s. <laughs> so, here we go. But anyway, that's uh, Rocco's Martin Life, uh, Static Clean. Definitely check this out. If you have Netflix, I mean, or hey, if you find it streaming online, you'll be able to get a chance. So, I guarantee you, it'll be fun. So, so I give this special... Five stars. I'm Joseph A. Sabora, and I'll see you later. Bye.